The latest achievement of NASA's James Webb Telescope represents a major milestone in the search for extraterrestrial life. Last year, when NASA's James Webb Space Telescope launched, it seemed like our world became a little bit more hopeful. The James Webb Telescope, which was created to reveal a long list of the universe's greatest and most perplexing secrets, left us in awe. It's designed to shed light on black holes, validate that the Big Bang Theory is accurate and, if they exist, uncover the first indications of extraterrestrial life. Whether there is someone or something alive in the universe may be the biggest mystery of all, or whether we truly are by ourselves. With the James Webb Telescope's powers, it may soon be possible to look deeper into the distant atmospheres in search of signs of life, in addition to counting and cataloguing exoplanets. What has the James Webb Space Telescope recently discovered? Do other beings exist in the cosmos besides us? Let's find out. Recently, NASA revealed that its brand new James Webb Space Telescope had surpassed expectations by taking the first direct photograph of a place outside of our solar system. Rarely have we looked at an exoplanet directly. Instead, we've mostly been observing their secondary effects on host stars. Simply put, we haven't had tools strong enough to directly detect light from distant planets. Until now. Massive telescopes of a new generation being constructed on Earth's surface promise to look at smaller objects like exoplanets for the first time and to see further into the cosmos. Additionally, the NASA Webb Telescope has also been eagerly awaited due to its ability to observe them in greater detail. It has begun to appear in recent months that the James Webb Space Telescope might surpass forecasts. The initial report that Webb had been able to collect carbon dioxide from the atmosphere of the gas giant planet WASP-39b occurred last year. That was accomplished through the use of spectroscopy, which examines light coming through the atmosphere of the planet from the host star. In addition, HIP-65426b, a Jupiter-like massive planet located 385 light-years away, has been directly observed by the James Webb Telescope. In contrast to other techniques discussed, which involved looking for a planet's shadow rather than the planet itself, the stunning photos of the planet are comparable to how we imagine taking a picture of it directly. Naturally, seeing an object directly rather than through its shadow gives much more information about its current state. A direct view of an exoplanet is especially useful for searching for evidence of extraterrestrial life. However, scientists are optimistic that James Webb and other upcoming instruments may be able to directly image smaller and more Earth-like planets. No one expects gas giant HIP-65426b to be a likely candidate for hosting life as we know it. We all need to have some serious debates as a species if James Webb ever points at a planet and discovers evidence of extraterrestrial megastructures resembling the Death Star or an armada of highly developed spacecraft. Is there truly anyone or anything alive somewhere in the universe? How can we locate them? Scientists responded to that query by describing precisely what Webb should be looking for in the search for extraterrestrial life. Clear indications of life on planets orbiting other stars may be found in the gases that creatures make when they clean up their habitats. In photos from the James Webb Space Telescope or other observatories that might soon go online, we only need to hunt for those gases in the atmospheres of those exoplanets to detect indications of extraterrestrial life. The chemistry of a distant planet is one of the more promising methods that scientists could find extraterrestrial life, barring an interstellar radio transmission. Numerous substances that life creates on Earth affect the atmosphere, such as oxygen produced by plants 
and methane released by a variety of animals and plants. A similar event might occur elsewhere in the galaxy, creating a chemical trace that people could recognize from a great distance. However, many of the gases produced by life are also emitted during non-biological processes. Their discovery could give the mistaken impression that a planet with life is present in a distant solar system when in fact it is a sterile rock. However, at least one type of molecule that certain organisms create to defend themselves from harmful components might give clear signs of life. Methane, a molecule with four hydrogens and a carbon, is the quick answer. But there's a lot more to the narrative if we're serious about honing our extraterrestrial hunting manual. Otherwise, one of two things could happen. Either you might mistake anything for a biosignature and receive a false positive, or you could miss something that is actually a biosignature. Researchers aimed to create a framework to help methane users avoid both of those potential mistakes. Backing up now, why not try looking for oxygen instead of methane using the James Webb Telescope? Well, it's really not that easy. JWST will look for biosignatures, sometimes known as evidence of life, by taking pictures of light absorption wavelengths. In essence, different molecules or elements absorb different wavelengths. Thus, the absorption characteristics of atmospheric oxygen are rather challenging to detect. Although oxygen is frequently mentioned as one of the finest biosignatures, JWST is probably not going to be able to pick it up. In essence, it's possible to simply miss oxygen lurking on an exoplanet and signaling, hey, there's life over here. However, the absorption process can easily capture methane. Methane may also be a reliable indicator of life because it is rather essential to life on our planet. If you detect a lot of methane on a rocky planet, you typically need a massive source to explain that, Chrysanson Totten said. We know biological activity creates a large amount of methane on Earth and probably did on the early Earth as well, because making methane is a fairly easy thing to do metabolically. In other words, methane is readily and frequently released by biological processes on Earth, including those within the human body. If you can reverse engineer that, you can conclude that a life form, perhaps even one similar to ours, could have survived by finding methane on a rocky planet in the cosmos. But keep in mind that the team's objective is to dispel any uncertainties or false positives while JWST searches for these life forms. You need to consider the entire context of the planet since one molecule won't provide the solution. Methane is one element of the jigsaw, but other factors that can influence a planet's atmosphere over geologic periods include its geochemistry, how it interacts with its star, and a variety of other processes. Although we are aware that methane is undoubtedly produced by life on Earth, other organisms can also produce the gas. According to experts, Methane can be produced and released into atmospheres by volcanoes, ocean ridges, hydrothermal vents, and even asteroid strikes. We must ensure that any methane detected by JWST on a rocky planet in the habitable zone, the area of every star system most likely to support life, is not merely non-biological methane. The researchers developed a sound rule of thumb for when JWST eventually finds the telltale molecule on a rocky planet, orbiting a sun-like star and in the habitable zone, after evaluating what would distinguish non-biological methane from biological methane. They claim that we may be able to rule out false positives if the planet's atmosphere includes a significant amount of carbon dioxide in addition to the methane, and has a large amount of methane compared to carbon monoxide, and if the orb doesn't appear to have a particularly water-rich composition. If all of these statements are untrue, they might have originated from a non-biological source, such as a volcano. 
If we're to succeed in the seemingly impossible task of discovering life outside of our planet, additional research along these lines will need to be conducted in the future, according to Chrysanson Totten. The most glaring false positives for methane as a biosignature are the subjects of this investigation. We will likely be surprised by the rocky exoplanet atmospheres, thus we must use caution when interpreting the data. Finding the easiest of these planets to define and then thoroughly investigating them in order to look for signs of life will be the work for the ensuing decades. NASA is creating a space telescope to look for habitable planets around other stars at the astronomy community's request. This telescope could help us determine the ultimate question, are we alone in the universe? Exoplanet research will be prioritized for the next space telescope. It might be possible to detect planets 10 billion times fainter than their host stars with the help of this new telescope, which should be sensitive to ultraviolet, optical and near-infrared wavelengths. It should also be able to search the atmospheres of numerous exoplanets that may be habitable for traces of life. The research estimates that such a telescope would cost $11 billion to develop, construct and run for five years. It would ideally be launched in the first part of the 2040s. This telescope will likely resemble the habitable exoplanet observatory HABEX and the large UV optical IR surveyor, two planned telescopes that NASA submitted for consideration prior to the Astro 2020 survey, Louvois. Although little about the project is finalized, Clampin was able to share what NASA has come up with thus far and reveal the working name for the telescope, the Habitable Worlds Observatory. This is mainly because NASA doesn't yet have an approved budget for the project, HWO. Currently, it is intended to place the HWO near Earth's second Lagrange point, L2, an area of space located approximately 1 million miles from the planet and facing the Sun's opposite direction. There, the gravitational pull of the Earth and the Sun will hold the telescope in position. The James Webb Space Telescope, the Webb, and the ESA's Gaia Observatory both call L2 home, making it a great place for space telescopes because the Sun never blocks their view of the direction opposite Earth. Though it seems to be increasingly congested, the neighborhood has plenty of space. The mirror that a space telescope employs to gather and focus light is one of the most crucial components in terms of design. The mirror is sometimes launched into space in one piece, like with Hubble, and other times it is divided into parts that are carefully aligned until it functions as one faultless piece, like with Webb. The latter can be easier to transport because the mirror can be folded up during launch while the former is simpler and can produce sharper images. The single 4-meter wide mirror was included in the first Habex design, but the concept for Louvois was to split the mirror into sections that could be set to function as a 15-meter wide mirror. HWO is anticipated to have a 6.5-meter segmented mirror, which is roughly the same size as Webb's. However, NASA wants to be able to align HWO's mirror on the picometer level, as opposed to Webb's mirror, which can only be aligned to only a few nanometers. That translates to a millionth of a millionth of a meter. One of the most exhilarating revelations Clampio made was NASA's dedication from day one to make the HWO serviceable. That means, unlike Webb, the telescope could be repaired and upgraded after launch and had to be improvised even for the much closer Hubble. The HWO has the potential to alter our understanding of the universe and our place within it. More than any other previous mission, if NASA is successful in convincing Congress to fund the observatory. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.